Guys, I keep seeing conflicting statements about Germany and are they going to be able to make it through the winter without Russian gas. Today they're saying that Germans are using more gas than usual and they're going to need to cut their gas by 20% to make it through the winter. But then they talk about how their natural gas reserves are 90% full or 93% full. What does that really mean? I'm going to actually go through their numbers and show you in plain English how much they use, how much their reserves are, and how much they rely on Russian gas and other countries, and could those other countries fill the void of Russia. And if you stay till the end, I'm going to talk about the possibly really good news in terms of German gas supply for this winter. So let's get started. First things first, when you read these news stories or hear them on TV, they confuse you with talking about different units of natural gas so that you cannot compare apples to apples. I'm pretty sure they don't understand it either. They're just quoting what they've been told. So you may see that natural gas is explained as being measured in megawatt hours or cubic meters or cubic feet or metric tons, or even barrels of oil equivalent. So to keep things really simple, I'm going to use BCM, or billion cubic meters, to explain all the numbers in this video. And so the first thing you need to know is, how much does Germany use in a year? Well, in 2021, they used about 100 BCM, or 100 billion cubic meters. So I'm going to assume that 2022, they need a similar amount to function at the same level that they did last year. So you hear about they have this underground storage that's 90 or 92% full or something like that. What exactly does that mean? Well, their underground storage is 24 BCMs. So that's 24% of their yearly usage. And at 90% full, that is about 22 BCMs they have for the winter. Okay, so without any other gas coming in, is this 22 BCMs enough to get them through the winter? The answer is no. So here's a look at the German gas storage levels. The orange is 2022, and by around October, it looks like they had about 70%. Last year, they were actually kind of low. Normally, they're higher, but this year at this time, let's say we're at 90, 93%. So even if it is completely filled, that is only 24 BCMs. So how much does Germany use in the winter months, say October, November, December, January, and February? Let's take a look. Now, here's a graph of the monthly consumption of natural gas in Germany. It is in terawatt hours per month. One terawatt hour is 0 0.094786 BCM. So I'm going to convert these numbers into BCM. But just looking at these numbers, if you divide by about 10, you'll get an approximation of the BCMs. So to see how much they used in 2021, you would add these blue bars up and then multiply by 0 0.0947 to get the BCMs. So these bars add up to 995, and when you convert it into BCMs, it's about 94 BCM. And this is an approximation of the levels here. I don't have the exact number. So you could expect that the usage in orange for 2022 is going to be similar to 2021. As a matter of fact, the news that came out today said that it's actually running a little higher than 2021 so far. So if you add up the usage for October, November, December, January, and February, you get 560 terawatt hours, which translates into about 53 BCM. And 53 BCM is more than twice the 24 BCMs that Germany has in storage. So they need to continue to get gas during the winter. And so where does Germany get its gas from? Well, 32% of it, or about 32 BCMs, come from Russian pipeline gas, which right now is zero. Domestic storage, 22%, or about 22 BCMs at 90% full. Norway pipeline gas, Netherlands, and pipeline gas exports from Czech, and then a few other. So basically, without pipeline gas, they're missing 32 BCMs. Now, I don't know how this 32 BCMs of Russian pipeline gas arrives at Germany. Does it arrive equally every month? 
or is it very low in the summer and a lot of it comes in the winter and they were expecting that now they're not going to get it i'm not sure about that but i know that they're missing about 32 bcms per year starting from about september when Nord Stream 1 was shut down now you see the media and some german politicians try to say that they have a plan in effect to get the gas through lng from qatar they just made some deal or something in the u.s and here is a look at how much all of these countries export in lng in cubic meters per year australia 108 bcms qatar 106 bcms us 95 russia 40. the problem is all of these <laughs> LNG carriers already have long-term contracts and so they can't just turn the ships around and send them all to Europe because Europe needs another 30 BCMs this winter or something along those lines. Now the U.S. was able to reroute some of their LNG shipments that they had under contract by paying a fine because the fine was cheaper than the extra money they would get by selling it in Europe for a lot more money. And in 2021, they shipped 95 BCMs of LNG total. And their growth rate in 2021 was 55% because a big LNG terminal came online. I believe it was the Freeport, which had an explosion and now is offline till November. Point is that the growth rate normally does not increase a lot in LNG capacity. It's usually like 5% a year or something like that. You see Middle East, which includes Qatar, the number one or number two shipper of LNG only grows about 2.2% capacity a year. OECD Asia LNG exports growing only at 2.3% a year. So even though Australia and Qatar ship a lot of LNG, most of that cargo is already spoken for in long-term contracts and this supply is not growing very quickly either through the supply or through the amount of ships that are available to transport it and qatar's energy minister said i hope that at some point there will be an end to the crisis which will bring peace to europe and hopefully will return some of the russian gas to support europe if he's the second largest LNG exporter, why would he be saying that? Well, here he says, if you look at the situation, it will be very difficult for Europe to withstand zero supplies of Russian gas for more than two winters. Many countries and companies have approached us, and I have consistently said the same thing. Europe has always depended on Russia as the main supplier through pipelines. There will be some LNG coming from the U.S. and from other places, but in the end, this is a small volume compared to the huge volume that comes from Russia. Most of the blame for high energy prices and the complete destruction of the European green policy lies with the governments of the EU countries. Europe cannot do without gas from Russia. Americans need to wake up. The whole world definitely does not support U.S. in this war. Quite the opposite. Has nothing, nothing to do with freedom and sovereignty about oil and gas dollars. And so even if Qatar or Australia or U.S. can ship more LNG, here's another problem. <laughs> Germany does not have any LNG import terminals. They have three planned, but those take a long time to put into operation. So most of the terminals are in Spain, Italy, France, Turkey, and uh, Great Britain and Greece. On Saturday, they said, Germany may be unable to avoid a gas emergency this winter if all consumers don't significantly cut consumption in Europe's biggest economy. According to Klaus Mueller, the president of Federal Network Agency, I can't pronounce this. <laughs> the situation may become very serious if we do not significantly reduce our gas consumption. And he says, households, industry, and business need to cut consumption by at least 20%. And they said that German households and small businesses use nearly 10% more gas than the four-year average for that week. 
and without significant savings. Also in the private sector, it will be difficult to avoid a gas shortage in the winter. Gas storage sites are more than 92% full, but warn that gas price fluctuations are huge. Despite the recent drop in gas prices, businesses and households will have to continue to prepare for very high gas prices. If we get a very cold winter, we have a problem. So even cutting usage is not the answer because they're buying much higher priced gas that is not affordable for the people and not cheap enough to keep German industry competitive. But there is one possible solution that just came up a few days ago, and that's the possibility of using Russia's Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. Now, weren't the Nord Stream pipelines blown up? Yes and no. You see, each pipeline is actually two pipes. So Nord Stream 1 is two pipes that are 27 and a half BCMs each for a total of 55 BCMs per year. The same as Nord Stream 2. There are two pipes for Nord Stream 2. So it's a total of four pipes. And from what is coming out in the news, they're saying that only three pipes were damaged. One of the Nord Stream 2 pipes is still operational. However, Germany never certified the Nord Stream 2 for usage, and they put that on hold when Russia invaded Ukraine. And whether it's coincidence or not, right before the Nord Stream explosions, the day before, there were protests in Germany where the Nord Stream lands in Germany for German government to turn on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. So I guess after people read the news, they may go out and protest some more to try to pressure the government to open the Nord Stream 2 pipeline to get some of that gas. So while Germany may survive with big cuts in industry usage and subsidies to consumers, they can't do that forever. And so they have to fix the problem of getting cheap energy. And the U.S. and Qatar LNG is not the solution in both price and quantity available to be delivered. So right now, there seems to be only one solution, and that is possibly the Russian gas from Nord Stream 2. Whether the Germans or the German government want to consider that as an option probably depends on how cold it gets this winter in Germany. Oh,